I want to welcome you to our discipleship series, Teach a Man to Fish. We've been looking at how to be a disciple of Christ, and tonight is the last part of this series. There are three videos prior to this, and so if you haven't seen them, I encourage you to go and watch Teach a Man to Fish, parts one, two, and three, and then come back and finish up with this video. The whole point of our study, if you remember, has been based out of the Shema, this ancient Jewish prayer, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And that word hear means to listen and obey. So we talked about loving God by listening and obeying. We looked at growing in Christ by listening uh, through prayer and worship and Bible study. And then we looked at serving each other by obeying what God has told us to do. So to conclude tonight, we're going to look at the phrase, Go into all the world. This phrase comes straight out of the Bible from some instruction of Jesus. But not just any instruction of Jesus, it's his last instruction that he gives to his disciples. Jesus has already died on the cross and been resurrected. And in Matthew 28, he says in verse 18, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, I'm not sure if you've caught on what's happening here in this series about learning to be a disciple. This lesson focuses on us going and making disciples. We're learning to be a disciple, and we're called to go and make disciples. Isn't that kind of like the blind leading the blind? If we're becoming a disciple, how can we go out and make more disciples? Well, Paul explains it like this in 1 Corinthians 11, starting in verse 1. He says, imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Paul likes that word imitate. He uses it a lot in his writings, and it means to follow, but really more than that, it means follow like I follow, right? So as a disciple of Jesus, we're called to go and make disciples. Why? Because it helps us to measure how closely we're following Christ. It's accountability at its finest. When we go and make disciples, the only way that we can do that by Paul's example here, is if we are becoming a disciple of Jesus, our own. It, it reminds me of that country song, uh, Watching You. You know the one? Dad, I've been watching you. Yeah, ain't that cool. I'm your buckaroo. I want to be like you. I hope that's not like copyright infringement. Uh, <laughs> the story of the song is this son who's imitating his father, which causes the father to check himself. Because he's hearing the son say the same things that he says and do what he does. And one of the reasons that God calls us to make disciples is so that we can see ourselves in others. There's this, we use it as like a thermometer of our relationship with God. I've heard someone say it like this. People don't become what we teach. People become who we are. Right? Right? You've probably seen it in your own relationships. The more you're around people, the more you become like them. And so that's what Paul says. He says, hey, look, I, I want you to follow me as I follow Christ. Learn from my relationship with God. It, and, and it causes us to want to lean into God more. Think about it. Disciples ask questions, right? They ask a lot of questions. I know they do because you come to me with questions. You're like, boo, I was reading in the Bible the other day and it didn't make sense. And I figure since... You went to Bible college and, and you're our pastor that you might understand. And then you launch into this conversation about something and I'm like, are you sure that's in like the Bible? Like, are you reading the right Bible? Like, where did you hear this from? Uh, it, it, I love those conversations. I love to talk with you about the Bible and what God's speaking. The last thing that I want to do is say, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Like you come to me with a question, I'm like, I got no clue. I got nothing for you. There are times when I have to say, I'm not sure about that. Let's research it and try and figure out what God's saying right there. But I love to have an answer. When we answer the call to go and make disciples, we're telling the Lord, I want to know you more so that I can share my knowledge of you with others. Right? I want to know you more so that I can share my knowledge of you with others. And it's even a little deeper than that. In Acts chapter 1, we have the continuation of, of that conversation from Matthew 28. It comes when the disciples ask Jesus if now is the time that he's going to establish his kingdom. Jesus, you died on the cross. You rose from the dead. You defeated death. So now surely is the, now is the time where you're going to step up and take over the throne. 
And look at Jesus' response in verse 7. He says, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they're not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. N.T. Wright, one of our modern theologians, points out that Jesus is quick to note the difference between authority and power. God has been given all authority, but we will receive power. God has all the authority, but you will receive power. And he goes on and he says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Don't miss this. Jesus ties in making disciples with being filled with the Spirit. You see that? Jesus ties in, a direct tie-in, making disciples and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now listen, that's an amazing topic, and it's something that we don't have the time to go into today. I don't have the time to to tell you all about being filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to be on the lookout for another video that's going to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, because I believe being baptized with the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to be filled with God to the point that we are able to fulfill the mission that He's placed on our life, that we feel confident to do what God has set in our hearts to do. That all comes from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. But look what Jesus says. He says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Jesus says, look, you're going to be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Do we see that happen today? Do we do that today? Do we go around telling people about him everywhere? We really don't have a context for that word witness. The best I've heard is this courtroom analogy, which is, I think, a fair analogy. It says, you know, like God's calling us to be a witness, like one who testifies to what they've seen and heard, like you would in a courtroom. But this word actually ties into a job description of people uh, in those days when someone would become king, when they would get a new king on the throne, these witnesses would go out and declare all over the region that there was a new king. Remember, this is before social media or 24-hour coverage on television. And so the only way for people to know that there was a new king would be for them to hear it from someone else. And so these witnesses would go out and share the good news that there's this new king. So when Jesus says, you'll be my witnesses, he's throwing a hint to his disciples that indeed the kingdom of God is already being established and it's going to be established through them. Jesus says, look, the one who's going to share the good news about who I am is you. Isn't that crazy? That Jesus would appoint you to be the herald. He would appoint you to be the witness, the one who speaks up and says, let me tell you who Jesus is. And I guarantee you, when you come to someone and share that good news, they don't want to hear that Jesus is the king of the world, that he's taken his rightful place on the throne of the world, what they want to hear is that Jesus is the king of your heart, that he's taken the rightful place of the king of your heart. When we go and make disciples, it's as simple as sharing with someone, hey, Jesus is king, and I can tell you he's king because I have given him, I have surrendered ownership of the throne of my heart over to Jesus. We get to personally talk with people about how Jesus has changed our life That's what it means to go and make disciples. That's what Jesus is requiring of his disciples. Hey, you go out and make other disciples. Remember he said in Matthew 28, of teaching them to obey everything that you've commanded. That comes from our own personal walk. That comes from us abiding in the Lord. And that takes us all the way back to the beginning of this study, to listening and obeying. Hear, church, Hear that the Lord is one, that the Lord our God, that we should love Him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. As we do that and we grow in the Lord, then we're able to freely share with others. Man, let me tell you about someone that I met that radically changed my life. Jesus is not someone. He is everyone to me. He is every, He's not something. He is everything to me. And he's changed my heart and my life. I don't want to share that with you. As we, as we grow in the Lord and as we, as we learn about who he is and as we listen and obey, then we have this incredible privilege and opportunity to share with others. Man, let me tell you about who Jesus is. 
When it comes to you and me being disciples of Jesus, we have to trust that God has put us right where we are so that we can tell people around us about Jesus. Note in Acts, he, he tells his disciples, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jerusalem is exactly where they were standing when Jesus gave them this commandment. He said, you're going to be witnesses of me right here. And God has put you right where you're at so that you can share Christ in your home, in your workplace, in your community. God has put you right where you are so that you can share the love of Christ with others. Going into the world is as simple as going across the street sometimes or walking across the office. And making disciples is as easy as sharing with someone about how Jesus became the king of our lives. And knowing when the time, right time to do so is comes all the way back to listening and obeying. And that's the simplest way to explain being a disciple of Jesus. This by no means is an exhaustive list of what it means to be a follower of Christ. But I do believe that this is a structure and these are building blocks of our faith. And if we'll learn to love, grow, serve, and go, then I believe we will build ourselves in the Lord to the place that when we stand before Him face to face, He'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. I pray for you that you're abiding in the Lord even during this season, that you're abiding in the Lord. I pray that you fall in love with God, that you grow in Christ, that you serve one another, and that you go in the power of the Holy Spirit and share the good news that Jesus is King. I love you, and I hope to see you soon.